Welcome. I am Dr. Angelica Christie, your host of the show, Your Radiant Life After 45, Skills for Healthy, Happy, and Prosperous Women. I believe in a world where women are cherished and can thrive because the world needs your light. I help you, the woman 45 and over, to discover and live your unique gift confidently and with pride. With over 25 years of professional experience as a naturopathic doctor, specializing in healthy aging, and as a lifestyle and relationship coach, together with my vast experience, just my life experience, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I am actually in my mid seventies. So you know that I share from a lot of experience, but mostly I share from my heart, my knowledge, but mostly from my heart. And if this sounds good to you, please be my guest here every week on this day, every Saturday uh, at three o'clock Eastern um, Daylight Time and later on just Eastern Time. Okay, so let's begin. Today's a little bit different. I know I said that I would speak about uh, the fear of death and dying, and it may come up, but there is something else that I wanted to share with you. And it probably came about because I have been um, studying with a guy, Finley, uh, for um, the last 20 plus years. And um, uh, just this morning and um, earlier today, I uh, read and studied so much about his teachings. If you want, I mean, he is a spiritual teacher, but he's also, he goes really, really deep into the issues of our life, um, why we have stress. One of his, um, one of his most favorite book is really letting go, because we are always holding on too hard, holding on too much, and that keeps us. When you hold on to something, then you are attached to whatever you hold on to. So that thing that you hold on to has some kind of power over you. Yes. Okay. So, but anyway, uh, so I want to share something. I love his stories and I want to share a story with you to start with today. Um, so it's a really simple story, but that's packed with important insights and principles to get us going here. And the story is one um, that I heard some time ago, I think a couple of years ago, but um, I came across it again and I actually um, copied it and pasted it. And so the story, the way I tell it to you is kind of how uh, Guy Finley uh, has told me, uh, has um, shared it. So, um, and here is the story. I could have changed Paul. He's talking about Paul. He, I could have changed it into a female name because this is all about about us women. But you know, I mean, men are in our in in our um, lives, of course. And um, if you want to feel as if you are experiencing this this story yourself, then just exchange Paul for your name or for a female name, okay? But Guy talks about Paul, so I am um, not to change his story. I am um, calling his, um, yeah, the person in the story, Paul, as well. So Paul has reached the end of his rope. How is it possible? With over half of his cruise ship vacation behind him, ruined by a, a strange seasickness, he had run out of options. Not only had the ship enjoyed calm seas, but he had never had this kind of problem before. Besides, when he was below in his cabin, he felt fine. In fact, he felt great. It was only when he ventured up on the deck that he dreaded this squeeziness that crept in. 
So feeling fine again, on the morning of the fourth day, he dressed in his shipboard finest don, his, um, his, his finest outfit, put on his new sunglasses and headed toward the upper viewing deck. But within five minutes of sitting down, he was up and standing over the rail, taking in deep breaths of cool air to calm his rolling stomach. You know what that means, right? <laughs> it was just then that the captain of the ship walked over to him and both men stood there looking out at the bright open sea. A moment or two passed and then the captain spoke. I see you're not feeling that well. A little embarrassed by the comment and the moment Paul hesitated before speaking. Then he said, actually, I'm not on top of my game at all, but thanks for asking. Another pause. And the captain turned to face um, Paul's side and said, you know, if it's not too bold, I think I know what's wrong. Paul thought to himself in a somewhat sarcastic tone, he really, but instead he said, oh, what's that? Now the captain knew he was on sensitive ground, at least by the tone of Paul's voice. And so he stepped back a half foot or so before answering, uh, answering him. Do you mind, he said, if we try a small experiment that may help you feel a lot better? Paul turned to face him, mustering up a half smile in spite of his sickness and said, I don't see why not. I've tried everything else. What do you have in mind? And before he knew it, the captain had reached over and gently slid Paul's new aviator glasses, his sunshades, off of his face. What's the deal? said Paul, reacting, squinting slightly in the bright morning light, well, because he was without his glasses now. Well, just wait a few minutes, the captain said. I want to see if my suspicions are true. So the two of them stood there with only the sound of the ship cutting her way through the waters between them and what seemed too many minutes later, too many, so it's a long time. About the same time he was getting past how uncomfortable he felt standing there saying nothing then Paul noticed something else was disappearing. His seasickness was disappearing, a bit stunned and almost reluctant to say anything for fear of wrecking his good fortune, he spoke up. I can't believe it, he said to the captain as he in inventoried himself once more just to be sure. I can't believe it, but... I feel better. And he looked into the captain's eyes for a hint of some kind. The captain spoke as he handed Paul back his sunshades, his sunglasses, his aviator sunglasses. But his explanation came as a complete surprise. He said, it's so simple as to not be believable. That's what the captain said. But it's, but this isn't my first cruise, he said, smiling. I've seen this happen a few times before, and that's how I knew. Only I could not really be sure without this small test we just did. Paul asked, what exactly are you leading up to? But the captain didn't say anything until finally he looked at Paul and said, I suspected that the real reason you didn't feel well had to do with the light green tint of the lenses on your glasses so that each time you came out on deck, 
you saw everyone on it through a slight green cast to the color of their skin. So with those sunshades on, everything was colored slightly green. Everything, including the people and their skins, right? <laughs> the captain paused to collect the right words and then made sure that Paul was following him. Then, said the captain, your mind was seeing everything else on the ship as being seasick too. And you just started feeling that way because of a certain kind of sympathy. And the captain raised his eyebrows as if to say, amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Needless to say, Paul's astonishment left him speechless. So the captain um, covered the moment, uh, or, made, uh, or took that moment for himself and said, anyway, the captain said, as he smiled a polite departing smile, let me know if there's anything else I can do for you to make your voyage more pleasant for you. And with that, as quickly as he had appeared at Paul's side earlier that morning, he was gone. And Paul enjoyed the rest of his travels without any problems. Okay, so that story was actually a story that um, I verbatim um, got from Guy Finley. He, ta ta uh, he tells amazing stories. I love his stories because it makes it very clear what's really going on, right? So what does the story tell us? Is it maybe that perception colors our experience? Yes, yes. Our experience of life, you know, it is determined how, how we see it. Pretty simple, yes? And how we see life is determined each moment by what we are looking at through a certain screen that we automatically pull up. Of course, in the story, there were actual sunglasses and you have probably seen those aviator sunglasses and they are very often green, right? They have a green lens and I guess it's probably a, a good thing because it probably blocks a lot of, a lot of um, bright, bright sunlight. But that part is not the point here. It's really the color, the color through which um, we often see everything. And um, the color is kind of the perception that we have at the moment. For example, if I just got um, a bad message in the telephone call, something, you know, somebody is telling me, oh, you know, that this terrible crime or somebody got shot and whatever all of a sudden my perception of whatever I see whatever comes through my mind and sometimes your mind starts racing after you hear um, news that that startle you a little bit all of a sudden everything is colored through that lens you know what I mean when I say colored through that lens is um, there is a um, a belief that all of a sudden cre um, may have crept up, that it's dangerous outside, or uh, crime is on the rise, or you know, or somebody is telling you that uh, their relative or their mother or their father have has died, and immediately we feel, oh my God, what could be wrong with me, or you know, and, and we, we become a little bit um, hesitant or, or maybe the exuberant that was just there a moment before was just wiped out because we got a different screen that all of a sudden, um, you know, is, is there and, and everything we think is colored through that screen, has to go through that screen. So, um, there are many times when we believe we see the world correctly, but fail to see that our view of the world maybe has been colored, maybe even compromised 
and it's very often without our uh, our knowledge, at least the knowledge in the moment. For for example, in Paul's case, of course, what he couldn't see is that the very thing through which he was looking to see his world was one was um, the one reason that created his seasickness, right? And, but once the captain was able to show him the actual cause of his seasickness, this um, unhappy condition, his condition changed. It, it changed almost instantly. And so it is with you and me when we um, get these things that, that color our world in maybe just in the moment. And then we can instantly change it by by asking ourselves is this is this real you know imagine all the steps paul must have taken during those first three and a half days at sea you know looking for some kind of release from feeling seasick like maybe some drugs some maybe he took naps maybe he didn't eat certain foods maybe he did um uh, breathing exercises or affirmations or possibly even prayer. Maybe he spent precious energies resenting some friend of his who may have told him to go on this, on this, that it would be so wonderful and he would have such a great time to take this trip. And it would give him much needed um, rest and relaxation and joy. And look what happened. But you see, here is the point. Nothing Paul could have turned to for relief had a chance to work for him because, as the good captain's intervention revealed, what Paul really needed was to be released from a misconception, not relieved of symptoms. You know, there, there were no, there was really nothing else that was causing it but a mis, mis, um, a misperception or a misconception. Misperception? Anyway, I think both are good. <laughs> what are some of the misconceptions that you carry around? Hmm? Ask yourself. The question is, do you know that what you assume often automatically is or at least could be a misconception? Yes? It's easier to hang on to our usual beliefs and to the assumptions that we have rather than questioning ourselves or even consider being completely wrong. God forbid. <laughs> you, may, you may ask what all of this has to do with fear of death because that's kind of the title of this, um, of this uh, um, episode. And not so much but sometimes we have to die to our um, 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 die to our misconception in order to see clearly right but if you are concerned about dying have you ever asked yourself what death really means what does it mean to you and sometimes it's not death itself that we fear because we really don't even know what it means to die right Nobody who died can tell us what it means. Well, there are some people who said they have died and came back. And most of them actually had interesting and even positive experiences. You know, the ones with the corridors and uh, the tunnel of light and feeling uh, all of this love and light and happiness. But what are we afraid of is of course, the unknown, and that was the first point in the fear of aging, the unknown. But we also, we are afraid of pain, yes? Like maybe not functioning or being able to take care of ourselves. Physical pain, yes, I mean, we know there are drugs, painkillers, but still, there's not, um, first of all, they're not always work 100%, but then also, um, when we think of dying and the fear of dying uh, in the connection with pain, 
we believe that it becomes more and more painful and that less and less can be um, done about the pain or can relieve the pain. Um, morphine is one of the last uh, strongest uh, weapons against pain, but you can only take so much of that very powerful drug before it can kill you. So I believe that um, fear of dying, a lot of it is the, the pain that we may um, feel and um, for a very, very long time. The sickness, not being able to take care of ourselves, right? And of course, what's going on for the last two years with COVID, this has brought all of this right into the center of our awareness. Um, I don't know, maybe somebody has died in your in your family or in your circle of friends lately, um, whether of COVID or of any other disease. But COVID definitely, be any um, pandemic brings illness, pain, suffering, death, right into the center of our awareness, right? And then apart from, from illness, and a pandemic, then there is more violence in our world today. And very often there is more, even more violence in our communities, on the, on the streets, sometimes even in our homes. And then of course, in wars. We thought we were so lucky uh, after the Second World War, there, were, there was no major war, at least not a world war. Then there were, of course, the wars in Vietnam and the wars in, in um, Iran and Iraq. Uh, what's going on in the eastern part of the world is, um, is disconcerting. And then, of course, Russia and the Ukraine. I'm not going into politics here at all. I only want to tell you that uh, these things, wars and everything I just mentioned right now before um, war, uh, are all things that bring into our awareness that we are disposable, that we die. Um, hopefully not until we reach an, an old age. That would be perfect because death is, in, is a sure thing. Once we are born, we die. That's for sure. Um, but it, it can be as simple as continuing stress that slowly eats away at our happiness and at our peace. It's a slow death. It's not that your body dies, but there is something that dies within you, right? And we often are unaware of our own patterns of maybe negativity, our own patterns of worry, of angst, of anxieties. Have you ever heard yourself say, what the heck was that all about? And this could be because of maybe a fearful thought jumped at you, kind of out of nowhere. Or you just did something in a, thought, in a thoughtless way, or you thought you, were, you acted in a stupid way. And you were asking yourself what you had just done or along the same lines, the thought that comes when you say to yourself, what on earth was I thinking? When it becomes clear, actually, maybe you were not thinking at all. <laughs> because if you would have thought, stopped and thought before acting, maybe you shouldn't have done what you then did. Then there's always, how could I have been so stupid? How could I have been so blind? You fill in the blanks. We all know that kind of internal dialogue, you know, and, and it's, it seems like to erupt within our mind out of nowhere. And we do that the one thing that we wish we hadn't done afterwards. <laughs> It's more clear than there are many times when we act out of behavior, right? Um, I mean, we act out of, of habit, right? 
we have a certain way of of acting and behaving while it's seeming right at us at that time later on we may find that it was all wrong for us and sometimes when others are involved as well then that's unfortunately of course um a, a double whammy because then we have because of our misguided choices we have pulled others into something that could have been prevented maybe but we don't actually see what is before us all the time we are temporarily blinded but not in the sense of having no vision of course but we are blinded in our conditioned nature in in how we usually do things in our reactions as it supplies of as as we we do it um habitually right so so now we have to learn how not to be fooled how to um ask ourselves some questions before we act before we um have assumptions before we judge before we um make other people or situations wrong maybe we just put on the aviator glasses like in the um how i started um the episode with the story of paul and his seasickness that went away when the captain took his the glasses off so what kind of glasses are you looking through when you are in distress hmm The desire for more clarity demands that we become more aware. Yes. And um there is something that I sometimes say and maybe you want to write it down. I think it's very helpful. I mean, it's not a religious thing even though it says thank you God. God, God the universe. You can um say thank you universe for helping me to understand that problem has already been solved and when you have a problem say this thank thank you universe for helping me to understand that this problem that i believe is a problem has already been solved it's solved okay and then just look at how it is solved or how you can solve it rather than lamenting or, or seeing it in in a way that um that does not support you does not help you see and acknowledge that life is perfect just as it is right now right here this doesn't mean that you should not change anything at any time but whatever you decide to change you will do from an unruffled from from a calmness an undisturbed mind you will see more clearly what you want to tweak what you want to change yes and of course this takes some contemplation so why don't you do this today or why don't you write out um a couple of things that you assume and maybe question them and especially when there is something that um that makes you feel un <laughs> not seasick like paul but unwell not not energetic not joyful not exuberant then there is something that holds you down maybe there is something that you see through green dark blue red black whatever colored glasses that makes you feel anything but your best okay so thank you so much for the time that you have spent with me i really really appreciate it i love you i feel that um uh, i get so much by sharing this with you it's a blessing for me as well and i know how precious your time is but if you like please share it with your friends share it with your family and um if you found value please come back next saturday and be with me again here at 3:00 at eastern 
time, Saturdays, every Saturday, live. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>